to the students of Gisad Valley National High School, the student in the senior high, to the parents who are watching this video, good day to everyone. Before we're going to start the formal distant learning this is school year 2020 and 2021, may I invite you to our cybersecurity seminar for grade 11 senior high school students. The objective of this uh, seminar or shall we say webinar are the following to give an overview of the distant learning and appreciate the support by the Federation PTA President and the School PTA President and the DICT Cluster 1 of Luzon to inform the stakeholder and students of the modalities of the distant learning of this school year to prevent or mitigate harm to or destruction of computer networks, applications, devices, and data, and ensure the right of individuals to privacy and confidentiality of their personal information. Another one is ensure the security of critical ICT infrastructure, including information assets of the government individuals and businesses ensure the consumer protection and welfare data privacy and security foster competition competition and growth of ict sector boost innovation by ensuring safer collaboration across all environment including cloud and mobile phone education stakeholders, fellow parents, magandang bagay po sa ating lahat. The pandemic that we are currently experiencing caused by COVID-19 has rendered the traditional face-to-face -face learning infeasible. Nevertheless, the Department of Education, through the able leadership of our Secretary Leonor Briones, created innovations that despite the challenges brought about by the situation, quality learning will continue through the different learning modalities available for our learners. Fittingly, the role of the parents have never been so relevant now than the previous times. Besides, it will uh, be emphasized more later that not less than the 1987 Constitution and several enabling law state that the primary role in educating our children essentially belongs to the parents with the state having a supporting role. So much so that we need a good partnership between the parents and teachers and of course learning institution in providing quality education for our children. With this primary objective in mind, comes the birth of the Parents' Academy. This is through the brainchild of the Department of Education, Baguio, Schools Division Office, in partnership with the Federation of Parents' Teachers Association. This is also based on our realization that most, if not all, of our parents are not equipped with sufficient knowledge and skills to be effective learning facilitators for our children. We need the training, webinars, and guidance of our experts for us parents to achieve our goals in uplifting the quality education in our city. This worthy program, as we're made aware, is a benchmark being pioneered by our school's division office and gained national attention by the Department of Education with instruction to implement the same in the entire region 
and probably it will be implemented in a national scale. We are looking forward to that, which will def definitely put Baguio in the limelight. So let us proceed now with the Parents Academy by stating its objectives. First, for to educate parents to access valuable resources to effectively support their children. In this, we need really the support of the school's division's office and the technical know-how and expertise. Second, to engage parents to become full partners in their children's or child's education. Third, empower parents to pursue lifelong, lifelong learning goals for themselves and their children, as we are aware of and we try to prove that education is a lifelong learning. Fourth, encourage parents to sustain their child's growth and well-being. We have key activities for us to achieve these objectives. First is the parent upskilling and reskilling. What are the components of this uh, program or key activities? First is the distance learning and parent engagement. Second, cybersecurity for parents. Uh, most, uh, one of the modality is the online learning and we need to be equipped with cybersecurity or some uh, instructions for us really to participate in this end. Third, learning on DepEd programs. We have to be abreast of the DepEd programs for us to better explain to our children what's happening and what is actually uh, necessary for us uh, on our end. Skills development. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, a uh, lot of parents are not that skilled to educate their children and we need skills development and uh, which will be provided uh, under the Parent Academy. Next is the universal design for learning. We must understand all of this universal design also for learning. And uh, next is the cordless care or e-counseling. This is uh, this uh, was actually advocated by our honorable mayor with the with the, the uh, uh, with the, the need for our children to be uh, guided or counseled uh, as far as their uh, emotional and uh, uh, spiritual emotional mostly psychological well-being the project kalayaan or the uh, volunteerism of some retired teachers, neighbors, and other parents to help other children uh, who, uh, who could not rely on their uh, resources at home and with the uh, lack of person who could actually take care of their uh, education. Uh, we have some volunteer parents that could actually reach out to other children. Uh, those are the programs for parents upskilling and reskilling. Second, parenting power, guidebook for parents. We need a guidebook for us to be guided accordingly. It's our Bible. Uh, it will lay our groundwork or the overall scope of our responsibilities. And with this, we need that, that guidebook guidebook writing as part of its component. Second, collecting stories. Stories, uh, success stories from different parents. And uh, any, uh, the, these stories that could help really in uh, the instruction of our children. Third, events hosting. We must organize activities or events that would increase parents' involvement in learning, achievement, and schools' activities. This uh, will hone our relationship, will strengthen our relationship with the school administrator, the school as an institution itself, and the parents. 
Second, hosting annual events that will showcase parent practices. Of course, we must learn from each other. And with this, we could actually have an event that we could showcase, showcase best practices for us to really practice the same through our respective homes and uh, uh, to improve our instructions for our children. Conduct events for parents to network with each other or organizations on a division level. Uh, as far as the PTA is concerned, we could actually have an interfacing with the Association of Public Schools Administrators because uh, on the private sectors, I mean, for them, for us to really have that link uh, towards one goal in improving the quality of education. Example also of sub, such an event hosting is an appreciation program to thank parents volunteer, recognition of volunteer parents, and significant milestones of the F, of the Federation of PTA. Mostly the, under the Project Kalayaan where we have volunteers that could help in the instruction of our children and to improve really these uh, things and to help other parents who could not actually be hands-on to their children. Uh, we could really recognize those parents who volunteer their services not only for their children but extending to other children. Finally, the Parent Academy Portal, which will include online resource for parents. This uh, we have uh, the part uh, we have as our supporting uh, supporting entity, the uh, DepEd through the different divisions. First, the School Governance and Operations Division that will actually manage the portal uh, also. Second, the CID or the Curriculum Implementation Division that will provide all the content, updates the content and contributes to the content. Uh, as we understand, we have an online resource there that we could get uh, the contents for us to improve uh, on the learning of our children para maturuan tayo how to teach our children too. And the Information Technology Unit which will provide the full portal page and assist clients on accessing the portal page. Uh, as we all know, most of, of our parents are not that literate or that equipped in actually accessing resources in the internet and this uh, unit will help us and will coordinate with the school's governance and uh, uh, operations division. Uh, we have partners, not only DepEd, the PPA or any other entity. We have partners that will help us in this uh, parent academy. First is the uh, Department of Information and Communication Technology, which will conduct a cybersecurity module for parents and learners. Of course, we have also different partners. We could actually tap the Association of Private Schools Administrators and we will be having some terms of reference for our partners and this will provide goods and services that will that would address needs of parents. Well, uh, when we were actually uh, elected into office, we thought of an impact project for our pa parents or the PTA as a federation itself. And we have created a group known as the Hope Champions. And initially, we are supposed to, to have a uh, parenting seminars. But this uh, pandemic happened. Uh, we shifted all our efforts in actually helping the parents to educate their children. And uh, simultaneously, the Death and Baguio also thought of such an uh, activity that uh, actually gave birth to the Parents Academy. And we will be, uh, this, uh, we intermarry these uh, uh, efforts 
and we will be making the Parents Academy as a success uh, not only through our city as we mentioned a while back the DepEd has instruction for it to be implemented on a regional level and hopefully we will be implementing the same on a national scale and uh, with that we thank you for the DepEd for uh, having such an activity in partnership with the Federation of Parents Teachers Association and with this we hope that uh, this would be successful for us to really continue the quality of education. With that, thank you and mabuhay po. A blessed day to each and every one of us. We were all caught off guard by this pandemic and we have to admit that we were all deeply affected, so was the Department of Education. Nevertheless, we all have to stand, move forward, and embrace the new situation. Usap-usapin ngayon ang magaganap na distance learning at napaka-importante at maselan ang magiging role nating mga magulang. We always say that parents are the first teachers of our children. And during the new normal, we have to keep up with this one. We will be in partnership with the Department of Education in applying the new learning modalities to the learners. During the previous webinars that were conducted, our FPTA President, Attorney Ron Perez, discussed that under the law, the main or the primary role of parents is to provide education to their children, which is really true. During this pandemic, our ch lives were challenged at narealize natin that there's really more into parenthood. Balikan nga po natin ang roles ng parents before the pandemic. We were then the backliners. Bakit ko po nasabing backliners? With regards to the education of our children, we then supervise, monitor, or do follow-ups. pagka po ng mga anak natin galing sa school, we usually ask, may assignment ka ba? Gawin mo na. Kailangan mo ng tulong and then they could ask questions from us. Or one week prior to exam, nire-review natin sila or ginaguide natin or we do tutorials. Yun po yung usual na ginagawa natin back then. So we were then the backliners. Now with the new normal, matitest po ang ating pagiging parent. Kailangan po natin ng close coordination with the teachers para po sabay nating magabayan ang ating mga anak. With the new normal, parents can be the frontliners for the education of their children. Kung noon po tayo po ang backliners, ngayon po, po pwede pong tayo ang maging frontliners. Bakit ko po nasabing pwede po tayong maging frontliners in terms of teaching our children? Dahil po tayo po ang mas madalas na makakasama ng ating mga anak sa kanilang pag-aaral. The usual support that parents do to their children before would now be extraordinary. Bakit po extraordinary? Dahil po sa nabanggit ko kanina na usual things na ginagawa natin before the pandemic in terms of the education of our children wherein we tend to guide them in a way na sinusupervise natin sila, uh, nagpa-follow up tayo sa kanila, or nagtatanong tayo if how are they in their school. We ina-assist lang natin sila on the things that they need, or even during sa paggawa ng mga school requirements nila. Pero ngayon, what are the roles of parents in the new normal? During the new normal, we could be or we will be the learning facilitators mas madalas tayo po ang makakasama ng ating mga anak sa kanilang pag-aaral. Kinakailangan nating mag-devote ng time para sa kanila. Alam po naming mahirap, lalo na pag-working ang mga parents. Pero kung po pwede po, sana mag-alat po tayo ng kahit kaunting oras para sila'y magabayan sa kanilang pag-aaral. Bukod sa pagiging learning facilitators, we should also provide psychological support to our children during this new normal. Moral support at tamang mindset ang ituro natin sa kanila para ma-embrace din nila itong sistema na gagawin natin. 
at huwag din po nating kalimutan ang spiritual guidance sa ating mga anak. Napaka-importante po na magabayan din natin sila sa kanilang faith, which I believe lalong tumatag with this pandemic. Siguro po at the back of your minds, may mga nagtatanong po sa inyo kung paano ko po, paano ko matuturuan ang aking anak. Hindi naman ako magaling sa English, sa science or math. Or mayroon din po tayong mga parents na baka nagtatanong na paano ko tuturuan ang aking anak kung hindi naman ako nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral. Dito po mapapasok ang sinasabi nating initiatives and support projects na inorganize at patuloy na ine-enhance ng Department of Education. Mayroon din po tayong mga innovative at resilient teachers at sila po I'm sure ay may mga naiisip na paraan kung paano po pat magiging kung paano po ipagpapatuloy ang communication nila with the learners. Meron din po tayong project kalayaan wherein we encourage other parents na may extra time and able to teach na mag-volunteer turuan ang mga batang nangangailangan. Uh, very applicable po ito sa mga magkakapitbahay. Kung meron po kayong mga kapitbahay na may mga same age group ng mga anak ninyo, pwede po kayong mag-volunteer as long as you are able and meron po kayong time. Malaking katulungan po kayo sa project kalayaan na ito na ikakandak ng DepEd. We also have the Parent Academy na inorganize din ng DepEd in partnership with the FPTA, FPTA wherein it aims to assist parents on how to be teachers and provide the necessary skills or trainings they would need in teaching their children. Kasama po dito ang growing knowledge skills wherein pwede pong magkandak ang FPTA ng series of webinars, trainings, para po ma-upgrade or ma-upskill yung mga kakayahan ng parents sa pagturo sa kanilang mga anak. Meron po tayong parent guidebook na na-discuss din po kanina. We could also conduct events. At meron din po tayo nitong parents portal na para sa akin na isa sa aking mga paborito. Dahil sa portal na ito, ma-access po natin kung ano yung mga specific Uh, subject matters na kinakailangan ng ating mga anak. Alam po namin na hindi madali, pero subukan at gawin po natin. This could also be a learning avenue to us parents. We will be learning at the same time. Sabi nga sa inspirational quote ni John C. Maxwell, Coming together is the beginning. Working together produces victory. Sama-sama po nating isulong ang edukasyon ng ating mga anak. Lubos din po tayong nagpapasalamat sa ating SDS, Ma'am Marie Caroline Verano, at ang ating ASDS, Ma'am Soraya Faculo. Ganun din po sa ating Parent Academy Focal Person, Sir Jerry Imson. Sa atin ding mga school heads at teachers na laging handa sa anumang sitwasyon at patuloy na gumagawa ng magagandang programa para sa edukasyon. Kami din po sa Federation of PTA Division of Baguio ay buong pusong sumusuporta sa inyo sa pamumuno ng aming presidente, Attorney Ron Perez, ganun din po sa aming Vice President, Sir Eddie Carta, at sa iba pang kasama naming officers na bumubuo ng FPTA. Muli po sa mga kapwa ko magulang, wag po tayong magsawa sa paggabay sa ating mga anak sa patungkol sa edukasyon. I would like to leave you all with one of my favorite Bible passage under the book of Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Napaka-applicable po nito sa panahon ngayon. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live and work together in peace and harmony. Ako po ang inyong FPTA Secretary, Maria Cristina Estangkay. Maraming salamat po. Good afternoon. During this pandemic, blended online learning will now be the platform and the new normal for students and teachers. With this, it is essential to be cyber safe in using digital technologies by remaining vigilant in protecting your personal information both online and offline. The Department of Information and Communication Technology aspire for the Philippines to develop through innovation, 
and constant development of ICT and pursuit of a progressive, safe, secure, and contented Filipino nation, which is our vision. One of our advocates is to make the Filipino citizen knowledgeable on how to keep their private information safe and to use internet responsibly through the cyber security awareness training. Our project development officer 2 and cyber security trainer Don Vincent Bueno will impart to you the know-how involving internet etiquettes including how to properly behave and use social media responsibly, the basis on keeping your information private and your devices safe as possible from cyber threat and the likes. This will also include topics about cyberbullying, social engineering, phishing, hacking, farming, and malware, and how to mitigate such cyber threat. They will also impart about different laws and sanctions under Cybercrime Law of 2012 and the Data Privacy Act of 2012 that were put in place to protect and make the Filipino people safe online. We hope that you will become more informed of your rights on data privacy and become responsible in keeping your information safe through our cyber security awareness training. Thank you very much and again, good afternoon. Good day everyone. Uh, thank you Director Leo for introducing me. So I am your resource speaker for the cyber security awareness. I am Dan Vincent Bueno from DICT Luzon Cluster 1. Let's begin. Okay, so welcome to the Cybersecurity Awareness uh, Seminar. So, in this seminar, we will be discussing the basic concepts and terminologies of, regarding cybersecurity. Okay, so what is cybersecurity? So, cybersecurity is the practice of protecting systems, networks, and programs from digital attacks. So, since we conduct na po tayo ng, ng classes online, and uh, we do video conferencing and we do a lot of things in the internet uh, such as social media and banking sa mga devices nation such as yung computers uh, mobile devices so digital po lahat yun, okay so we're all prone to uh, digital attacks so when uh, when we are using our devices uh, or we are using the internet, uh, we could encounter yung cyber threats, okay? So, a cyber threat is a malicious act that seeks to damage data, steal data, or disrupt digital life in general. Okay, so we'll be discussing the various cyber threats uh, in these slides. Okay, so, the first cyber threat po na i-discuss natin is malware. Okay, so malware is an application with the intent of damaging devices, stealing information, and causing a problem, okay? So, my types po ng malware na uh, discuss mo natin briefly. Okay, so meron po tayo yung virus, yung worm, yung trojan, yung ransomware, spyware, and adware. Okay, so... Ito po yung types of malware. Okay, so hindi lang po yung virus ang nag-affect sa devices natin. Meron uh, certain types of malware. Okay, so ang malware na madalas nating ma-encounter is yung worm and trojan. Okay, so this is the major types of malware but there are other types of malware. So you could search that po sa uh, Google po. Okay, so next na i-discuss po natin is hacking. Okay, so the gaining of unauthorized access to data in a device. Okay, so may two types of hackers po tayo in general. So meron yung black hat hacker and white hat hacker. So yung black hat, black hat hacker is the bad hackers. So ito po yung nagsisteal po ng information. Ito po yung uh, nag gumagamit ng financial accounts natin and uh, using our social media din okay, for their own benefit. While ang white hat hacker, sila yung mga hacker na nag-report ng mga uh, problema sa isang application or a website. 
Okay, so next na cyber threat po na i-discuss natin is phishing. Okay? So, it's a cyber crime that target uh, individual contact, contacted by email, telephone, or text message. Okay? So, itong phishing po is uh, they pose as legit legitimate uh, institution such as yung mga banko or kung ano mga usually mga banko, mga mga anything financial related. Okay? So, uh, they're sending text message na ginagaya nila yung format ng banko or an email. Okay? They even uh, call you. Uh, they they disguise themselves nga as yun nga, as yung mga taga-bank. Okay? So, ito yung uh, madalas nangyayari online. So, next is identity theft. Okay? So, is the crime obtaining the personal or financial information of another person. Okay? So, ito yung mga uh, information na nakukuha ng mga cyber criminals. They 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 use our ID so kuwari na pinost niyo po yung ID online or mga personal information niyo they could use that uh, information to do it in a to do in their uh, malicious acts okay so they could use it to apply in the bank or you know uh, transact online even personally so uh, please uh, do not publish personal information online. Okay, so social engineering uh, is technique used by criminals. Okay, so uh, into revealing confidential information. Okay, so ito yung mga tao na madalas hindi natin kilala. Okay, so ito yung mga, mga taong uh, nagbibifriend sa atin na mag uh, bigay ng mga confidential information that could lead into knowing your password or uh, knowing knowing who you are. Okay, so ganun po kasi uh, ginagawa ng hackers para makakuha sila ng you know, substantial information to to generate yan, uh, your passwords. Okay, so yun po ang social engineering. Okay, so, how to be safe from these cyber attacks? So, we will be using uh, trusted software, okay? So, uh, only download software that is legitimate, okay? So, it has good reviews. So, mag-download lang pa tayo sa mga Google Play, sa Apple Play Store, or doon mismo sa website mo mm -hmm. Uh, software developer, okay? Uh, we'll be using antivirus softwares you know, to prevent, detect, and remove malware. Okay, so, ang mga computer po natin uh, is uh, may built-in na pong antivirus software. Okay? Ang mga phones, uh, kadalasan wala. So, backup data. So, it's very important to back up our data. So, we could back up our data through the internet, such as yung Google Drive and uh, iCloud. We could also back up data offline using external drive or uh, flash drives. So, updated software. So, let's always update in software para uh, hindi po, hindi po ma-access na mga black hat hacker po yung mga uh, loopholes po sa isang software. Okay? So, not only it helps you protect your device, but it adds new features. So, use strong passwords. There are do's and don'ts when creating a password. So, uh, your password should be made up of 10 or more characters. Uh, includes combination of capital letters, numbers, and symbols. Use passwords that are easy to remember. Use different passwords for different accounts. Okay. These different languages and dialects can also be used. Okay? So, uh, this is the don'ts. Don't use names of pets, families, and friends. 
Avoid using letter or number patterns such as 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. And refrain from using personal information such as birthday and address. Okay? So, naging don'ts po ito kasi nga, uh, pag na social engineering na po kayo, syempre, ma mababackground check and uh, makikita nga yung personal information mo, which is kadalasan ginagamit ng mga common users as their passwords. Okay? And meron din kasi mga security questions sa mga accounts din na uh, is related to your personal information. Okay, so uh, please refrain from using uh, personal information and, uh, and, and easy passwords. Okay, so uh, there is protection for our devices. So, meron tinatawag na two-factor authentication. So, or one-time PIN, okay? So, this uh, this kind of security measure uh, ensures yung mga users tayo na ma-secure accounts natin, okay? So, hindi, hindi lang enough na alam, yung, alam mo yung password mo, but you need to authenticate yourself. So, mag-send yung company ng text message sa'yo and you will enter the corresponding uh, PIN code. Okay, so, uh, there are parental controls sa mga applications po natin. So, meron yung applications na nilalagyan nila ng password yung, ano, para ma-access or uh, kung wala, ipapahiram mo sa mga bata yung mga devices nyo, uh, you could limit the features, okay? So, there are certain applications that has parental control na they could limit features or they could uh, they could protect it by password pattern so this is useful when whenever the children uh, uses the devices okay so uh, meron pa to sa mga mobile devices and sa computer okay so if you want to know your uh, if you want to know if your application has parental control, you could uh, search it online. So, also web ha websites has parental control. So, for example, uh, this YouTube Kids has uh, parental control, which could limit uh, the, the children's viewing time for this uh, limited amount of time. For, for example, one hour lang manamod yung mata. So, may limit siya. And, yung kagandahan po nito is, lahat po ng videos na nandito is for uh, children. Okay? So, there is no uh, there is no unfiltered content. Okay? So, sa YouTube po kasi na normal, meron pong mga uh, content doon na minsan nakakalusot. So, minsan napapanood ng bata, ginagaya ng bata, which could be uh, dangerous for them. Okay? So, kasi ginagaya nila. Okay, so meron po tayong loss and sanctions sa mga cyber crimes po natin and cyber threats. Okay, so so ano po ba ang data privacy yan? So, focus on how to collect, process, share, and archive and delete the data. Okay, so meron po tayong law na Data Privacy Act of 2012. So, an act protecting individual personal information. Okay, so pag ginamit sa mali yung information nyo, you could uh, use this law to sue yung mga involved na tao. Okay? And meron din yung Cyber, Cyber Crime Prevention Act 2012. Yeah. So, this uh, law, uh, actually yung mga uh, yun, yung mga phishing, mga identity theft, mga cyber libel, Actually, pasok siya sa Cybercrime uh, Prevention Act. Okay? Pati yung mga child pornography. And, uh, meron din yung Anti-Bullying Act of 2013. Okay? So, uh, this act uh, covers mga social media, uh, anything uh, related sa student-to-student -student bullying. Yan, sa mga yan sa mga bata. 
okay uh, this can be applicable to those uh, situation okay so meron tayong tinatawag na netiquette so are things individual should follow for safe and better online environment so we discuss natin kanina choose strong and hard to guess passwords be selective when adding friends okay so in 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 the online world we don't know uh, kung sino po yung mga tao na yan yung ina-add po natin and hindi natin alam baka cyber criminal sila na they do social engineering or they lure uh, yan children yan, to meet meet personally so ingat ingat po tayo na mag-add ng friends sa mga social media so know the privacy setting of your uh, social media so siguro duhin po natin na yung mga taong gusto lang natin makita yung content natin okay so yung mga close friends family so we could change the privacy setting to those kinds of uh, setting so stop think before you click okay so this falls under phishing okay so kung click po tayo ng click we could uh, we could put ourselves in danger yeah we could could maybe give our username and password to the uh, cyber criminals uh, when they're using an uh, online uh, phishing page okay so usefully protected devices okay so antivirus uh, let's update our devices yeah, don't publish personal information. Okay, so this, yung mga ID natin, huwag natin i-post. Or kung isa as much as possible, huwag din natin i-post kung, kung nasan tayo currently. Because uh, a lot of cyber criminals and criminals are uh, are watching us. So verify applications before installing. So malware uh, can be in those applications and don't upload inappropriate photos avoid using inappropriate language so this ends our cybersecurity awareness seminar and thank you for listening before we end this webinar allow me to make an acknowledgement or shall we say special thanks to the following for sharing their ideas and expertise the Baguio City PTA Federation President Tornio Ron Perez Gisad Valley National High School PTA President Mary Cristina Tangkay Director Leo Ogtu who made an introduction to cyber security and Don Vincent Bueno who is in charge of the cyber security training. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise to our students. And the Gisad Valley National High School, uh, for some of this uh, video presentation, please uh, watch the uh, Parent Academy orientation, which is posted in the Facebook page DepEd Tayo, Gisad Valley National High School. Thank you so much for attending this webinar.